The purpose of this video is just to give a couple of definitions, and as a pre-warning before I say anything, I want to say that all of these definitions are just special cases. There are generalizations of all of the definitions I'm about to give, and we'll be looking at the definitions only in the specific context of the category of open sets on a topological space. Okay, so that being said, there are two definitions that we're going to do in this video. So first we'll define a uh, sieve. That's the first thing we'll define. I'd actually like to give two definitions of this. I'll give an internal definition, and also give an external definition. So I think that both definitions are useful and enlightening um, in different contexts. Okay, so first we'll define sieves, and then we'll define a special type of sieve called a covering sieve. And as we'll see, this is a kind of specialization um, of the idea of an open cover. It's a very nice open cover. Okay, so let's start with the internal definition of a sieve. So again, all of this is only over the open set category of a topological space. So we'll let x be a topological space. And we'll let O of x be its open set category. And again, both of these definitions, both the definition of a sieve and the covering sieve, will be generalized later to Grotendieck topologies. But for now, we're just talking about a sort of old fashioned classical topological space. Okay. So, and let's also let u be an object of O of x. So u is just an open set of x. So a covering sieve, sorry, not a covering sieve yet, a sieve on u is a collection s of open subsets of u. I guess, it, yeah of open subsets of u such that whenever whenever v is inside of w and w is in s we have that we have that v is inside of s so the set S is closed downwards. If you know what a filter is, um, you can convince yourself that a sieve is kind of a, like a reverse filter. But anyway, this is the definition of an internal sieve. I guess I should say internal here. So an internal sieve is just a collection, uh, internal sieve on an open subset U is just a collection of open subsets of U, which is closed downwards. Whenever V is inside of W, and W is inside of the sieve, then V is also inside of the sieve. So one way of remembering this is to kind of use the analogy furnished by the definition, which is to think that having V inside of W kind of means that V is smaller than W. And saying that W is inside of S means that W fell through some sieve. So we think of S as being some sieve, and saying that W is inside of S means that W fell through that sieve. And since v inside of w means that v is quote unquote smaller than w, well, if the big thing w fell through the sieve, then the small thing v should have fallen through the sieve too. And that's why v will also be inside of s. So that's one way of kind of remembering this condition. OK, so that's an internal sieve. And let me say what an external sieve is. So again, we'll let x be a space, and we'll let O of x be the open set category. And we'll let u be an object of O of x, so u is an open subset of x. OK, so to motivate this definition, let me recall some things about Yoneda. So we have this open set category, O of x, sitting down here. And there's an embedding from this category into this category. This category of functors 
or a homset category in the category of cats from O of X opposite into the category of sets. So this is also known as the category of pre-sheaves on X. I guess I should say set valued pre-sheaves on X. On X. Okay, so we've got this little category O of X sitting over here, and we're embedding it inside of, this is a terrible attempt at redrawing that same shape. And we're embedding it inside of some huge category. So this is O of X, this is, again, the copy of O of X, and this is, um, well, I guess I'll just say this is this category, the category of pre-sheaves. Maybe I'll just write pre-sheaves. So we have this embedding given to us by the, all given to us by Yoneda. And what this embedding does is it takes the open set, maybe I'll write this up here, it takes the open set U to the functor hom and O of X of arrows into U. So we take u to this contravariant functor. u gets mapped to this contravariant functor, this hom functor. Uh, but the embedding itself is actually covariant. So this embedding u maps to this functor. That's a covariant functor from O of x into this hom category, from O of x into the category of pre-sheaves. OK. So one thing about this embedding is that it can create sub-objects. So if we have some element u in here, well, there are sub-objects, potential sub-objects of U inside of this category. And those will still you know, exist when we move over here to the embedding. But there may be more sub-objects in this category. right? We've embedded O of X inside of this larger category of pre-sheaves. And now some element U in here may have more sub-objects. There may be sub-objects that come from the enlarged category. So maybe there's some strange sub-object S sitting over here. So we would like a way of kind of looking at all the sub-objects of U after we embed it. You know, we want to include all the old ones, but we also want to consider these new ones. And a sub-object in this new category, in this category of pre-sheaves, that's exactly what an external sieve is. So an external sieve, an external sieve on U is a sub-object of H of U, which is equal to um, O of X into U in the category um, cats, that is the functor category from O of X opposite into sets. So that's what an external sieve is. An external sieve on U is just a sub-object of H of U in that pre-sheaf category. Okay, so I don't think I'm going to prove this in the mainline videos, but these two notions are equivalent, so internal sieves internal sieves and external sieves are basically the same thing. And one way of thinking about this is that an internal sieve is kind of a spreading out of a functor, right? Because an external sieve, it's a sub-object of H of U, so it's a functor. So the internal sieve is kind of spreading out that functor. And the way you go from an internal sieve to an external sieve is just by organizing the data into a functor. So maybe I'll put up a detailed video explaining exactly how that works. But if you take a moment to kind of uh, think about it, you can see it for yourself as well. Okay, so that's how we define internal external sieves. Now let's talk about covering sieves. So I think this is e most easily presented in the internal world. So let's have the same setup before with x a topological space, O of x the category of open sets, and u a subset, an open subset of x. So 
given all of that, a covering sieve, covering sieve on you is a sieve S on you such that you can guess what the condition will be, such that u is equal to the union of all the elements inside of that sieve. So this is in the, I guess I'm tacitly uh, assuming the internal perspective. Tacitly assuming the internal perspective here. And remember in the internal perspective, in the internal perspective, a sieve is just a bunch of open subsets of you, a special sort of collection of open subsets of you. So it makes sense to talk about unioning all of those open set subsets. And that's all that we're doing when talking about covering sieves. Okay, so we've given the two definitions, and the last thing I'd like to do in this video is kind of briefly give a little bit of intuition about a covering sieve. So the way, that, the way that I like to think about covering sieves is kind of open covers which are infinitely well graded or which are well graded sort of all the way down. So maybe this is most easily presented just by looking at the difference between an open cover and a covering sieve. So let's suppose that we have some open set U, which I'm just going to draw like this. I guess if you like we can view this as a subset of the real line, but I just want, mean this to be an abstract drawing. Now let's look at an open cover. So in, a, in an open cover we might sort of, well I guess I should draw them as open intervals if we're going to at least somewhat assume the real line idea. So an open cover is going to consist of a bunch of intervals like this, and rather than having to draw a bunch of parentheses on this line, I'd rather draw these things as follows. I'd rather draw them like this. So let's say that this line here is meant to correspond to an interval that looks like that. Okay, so given that diagram convention, an open cover might look something like this. An open cover view might look something like this. So every element in U, every element up here is inside of one of these open sets. And all of these open sets are, they live up to their name, they're open. So this is what an open cover view might look like. And this is a kind of finitary, blocky looking thing, right? We have these four sets and there's kind of nothing else about them. They're just sitting there uh, very, g very digitally, very, um, very finitary. But a covering sieve, a covering sieve would look a little bit different. Maybe we could start out with the same, you know, seeds. We could start out with some open cover that looked like this or something like this. But because of the downwards closure axiom for a covering sieve, the covering sieve would have to contain a lot more subsets. So for example, it contains this, and well, this open set is inside of here, so it must also contain this line. It would also have to contain this line, and this line, and this one, this one, sort of going down forever. And similarly, it would have to contain this open set, and this open set, and this one, going down forever. And again, you can do this with any one of these things, right, because of the downwards closer, closure action, axiom for a covering sieve. Sort of once it contains one open set, it has to contain all of the open sets inside of that set. So you get much finer gradations with the covering sieve than you do with the open cover. And this is formally convenient for a lot of reasons. It's formally convenient in the same way that considering an ideal as its own object is nicer than considering the set of generators for that ideal or something like that. So that's the way that I like to think about covering sieves. And that's the end of this video.